Hi everyone, Guy and Penny from Midwinter Minis here. In this episode, we'll be painting up another explorer from the Blackstone Fortress Escalation expansion, the Primaris Psyche Aradia Medellin. Aradia? Aradia? Yeah. Aradia. Aradia Medellin. To start off, Guy added some basing elements with sand and aquarium gravel, and primed the model with grey plastic primer. To show that you can still make subtle but effective colour schemes using such a restricted paint selection as the 14 that we're using, Guy is planning on painting a radius uniform up in a mix of off-whites, greys and subtle pinks and purples. This will also help to give each of the explorers their own colour identity too. To create this nice lilac colour for her big billowing coat, I mixed equal parts of purple, red and white paint and thinned it with a little water so it flows nicely. Paint the inside and outside of her coat, as well as the hanging tunic at her waist. I use plain khaki paint for the wood of her staff, which will be a nice simple base coat for achieving a bleached wood look later on. I then mixed purple and silver paints in equal parts, and painted her psychic hood and the body armour on her chest. Adding the silver does two things, it makes it a little bit shiny, which is a nice touch, but it also desaturates the colour, keeping it a bit more subtle. So we've got some grey on the palette ready for the next steps. The first one is using the straight grey to tidy up the little bit of her trousers that are still visible. Then we added equal quantities of white to the grey to create a very neutral off-white and painted her gloves, her boots, her las pistol holster and the fancy little waist scarf. <laughs> If you fancy adding a little touch of detail here, use a smaller brush to gently trace the outer lining of the tunic at her waist. Don't worry too much if the line isn't neat, we've only been painting for about 14 minutes, so your original lilac will probably still be good on your palette. You can tidy it up when you get a chance. Now since Aradia's face totally reminds me of Storm from the 90s X-Men animated series, and because I want to show you that you can still get darker skin tones with the limited colour palette we're using, I simply added a tiny, tiny dot of black into my brown paint until I felt the tone was just right. Now it's always safe to go easy when adding black to colour mixes, it's often very overpowering. Also, don't forget to paint the little bit of skin exposed by the opening on her glove. Next up, I used straight silver paint, thinned with a bit of water so it flows nicely, and painted the metal parts of her staff, but not the top. I also caught the cables and wires, and if your hand is feeling steady enough, you can also use the edge of your brush to gently trace the weird cranial implant she's got going on. If you get silver on her skin, the paint we just used for her flesh tone is probably still wet on your palette, so just fix it up if you need to. Then grab your gold paint to give the business end of her staff a nice base coat. There's a couple of little imperial insignia on her uniform too, so you might want to pick those out while you're at it. So, sod minutes, 1,526 seconds in and the base coats are solid. Ready for the wash stage! Now by the way, a little recommendation while I've got you here. If you're thinking to yourself, hmm, painting up a female character in pink, what a sexist pig, down with that sort of thing. Down with this sort of thing. <laughs> then you should go listen to The Secret Lies of Colour. It's an episode of the 99% Invisible podcast where they talk about various cool colour related things, including a lot about their history. And it turns out that historically blue was a very feminine colour and was heavily associated with things like the Virgin Mary and princesses, whereas pink was a fierce masculine colour, considered to be a light red more than a colour in its own right. Anyway, I thought it was super interesting, and maybe you will too. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out. Now we're ready for the wash stage. As the colours are quite delicate, we want to create a slightly more subtle mix than usual. Mix equal quantities of water, black wash and brown wash, and paint this over the entire model. It'll need some time to dry, so we'll work on another model, do some tricks with your dog, and come back when it's dry. Step. Good girl. After tidying the base up, you can definitely call the speed paint part of this tutorial done. We've done like 25 episodes of this series, so you probably know the score by now. Slightly more advanced steps coming up, but first a quick shout out to our new patrons, Liam, Jason, James and Austin. Awesome viewers like them keep our videos free from ads for terrible mobile games and crap films. Yes. Woo! Woo! <laughs> First of all, we'll add a tiny bit of white to our grey, just to make it slightly lighter than the trousers, and pick out the more prominent raised areas using our detail brush. 
Add even more white to that grey mix to get your off white again, just making sure that it's a little bit lighter than the colour we used on the gloves and the boots, and just trace along the edges of the folds, creases and the highest points. Don't paint the whole thing, just pick out the highest, most pointy areas. Now we'll do the same but with the coat. So mix up your lilac colour again, but this time add two parts of white instead of one in the mix. This will create a nice highlight colour. Again, make sure to leave the majority of the base coat layer showing through. We're just catching the tops of the folds, trying to paint in the direction of the flow of the fabric whenever you can. Okay, so let's add some detail to the psychic hood by painting those little orby things. We'll do our usual shiny object trick. So the first step is to choose your base colour. I'm going to go with blue and base coat the objects. It doesn't matter if it spills over the edges a little, as it'll just look like it's glowing in the final result. And that's my excuse for being messy anyway. Now, mix a little white into your blue and paint the lower half of each orb. Add more white and paint the lower quarter. Now just add a tiny dot of white to the upper edge of each orb and job done. Just three minutes from start to finish on this effect and it's a great balance of speed, ease and effectiveness. Let's add a bit of white to her eyes and teeth to make the face come alive a bit. We simply used thin white paint and a detail brush and somehow managed not to get it everywhere. If you do go a little bit over, as usual, don't worry, just neaten it back up in the next step, which is the skin highlights. We simply mix the brown and the black again, but this time using slightly less black. Thin it nicely with water and just gently catch her brows, cheekbones, chin and forehead. Next up, I did a sort of little step backwards actually and went back to the coat. I decided that I wanted to give the impression it was slightly shiny, so I added some more white to my still wet lilac highlight mix and just lightly touched the sharpest points, dragging a little line down simulating a little light sheen. Now almost done. To finish off the model I did my usual last steps with all the characters and that's to use a black wash to do a little recess shading on the areas where different colours border each other just to add a little bit of definition and contrast. I also sunk some of that black wash into her mouth and eye sockets to make them look a little bit more natural. That sounds cool. Yeah, it does doesn't it? Yeah that's really cool. I'm going to say it again. I want a gag. And finally grab silver paint and catch some of the edges of the metal elements, even the gold parts. Rogue. This helps to bring back some of the shine that the wash stage knocked off. And after a little base tidy up, in just over 55 minutes, Aradia is complete and ready to take on the Blackstone Fortress with laser eyes and fierce cheekbones. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Do me a favour and smash that like button. Not because Guy painted the model quite well, but because it's my birthday on the day that this video comes out. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now. Bye!